how how old were you when all that started to happen? Five. Five. Uh, the first, yeah, I think I actually most children have experiences, you know, and and a lot of them uh, actually even earlier than five. You know how people. Uh, know that children sometimes have invisible friends. Uh, they're not imaginary. I mean, they're real. They just don't know what to make of it, so they say imaginary friends. But it's actually very common for kids to see beyond what normal humans can see. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the age of five, it was a very, very strong, clear experience. That's the, that's the reason why I... I say, you know, I usually talk about that experience as the beginning of it all. Well, you know, whenever I was little, I remember staying at my grandparents' house, and I I woke up in the middle of the night, and I was probably around five years old, and I noticed something standing in the doorway of the room that I was in, and to me it looked like a suit of armor. I don't know how else to explain it, <laughs> but I don't know if it was my mind playing tricks on me or I was actually seeing something. Yeah, that's exactly what happens is we have an experience and uh, then we dismiss it because we think, hey, wait a minute, did I just make this up? And uh, and also, of course, you're embarrassed or you're afraid to talk about it because your parents or, you, you know, your brothers and sisters, or whatever, they'll say, there's nothing there. You're weird, you know, so you kind of like don't talk about it usually. Um, and that's why with time, most people... Uh, kind of um, shut down and stop these experiences from happening spontaneously uh, especially when they become older Um, so uh, yeah I'm pretty sure you had an experience (laughs) well like you say you're a little nervous to tell anybody because you know number one you're not sure yourself and number two like you said you think somebody's going to think uh oh this person needs to be locked away (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But I mean, for me, the thought of having an extraterrestrial here is so intriguing. And I keep telling my wife, I said, as soon as they come back, I'm leaving with them. So <laughs> <laughs> definitely. No, you're not the only one. I'm telling you. <laughs> you know, there gotta be. Oh, well, I mean, you know, they are here, by the way. You know, so uh, except that they're not. I mean, they're here um, on many levels in different ways. So some of them are on the other side of the veil. What I mean by that is. You know, they exist in a different spectrum, so we can't see them with our physical eyes or hear them, you know. Um, But they're, you know, people call it another dimensional reality. So, but they can just lower their vibration and become visible to us and then go back again. So, um, so they like, they're right on the other side of the veil. So there's those. And there are others who are incarnated. I mean, they look physical, you know, they're walking amongst us, I think. And uh, some of them are know who they are, and others are kind of opening up to who they really are. Does that make sense? Oh, yes. Well, I, I saw something on this theory about about atoms and the, the different frequency that they, they run on. And, you know, if they've somehow figured out to manipulate that, I, I don't see how that would be impossible to, to walk around invisible. Yeah, absolutely, exactly. Uh, I mean, even humans have some technology to make things uh, invisible to the naked eye. So you can imagine that aliens who are a lot more advanced uh, would have uh, a much better technology. So um, definitely. In fact, I seen that myself you know and other people that i've worked with i know have had similar experiences so i know for a fact that that is um, that that's how it works and some of them come in uh in a vehicle you know like in a, in a spaceship type thing um but they can't like uh exist within this atmosphere for very long so they kind of pop in and pop out again um and I think their technology, again, you know, humans want to explain everything from the human point of view. Like if we, you know, they think that um, 
the, the, the stars are so far away that it will take whatever, how many hundreds of years, thousands of years for, um, you know, a, a visitor from another planet to get here because they they think that they have this propulsion, you know, <laughs> technology, like they're using the same technology as we are. And of course not, you know, it's like they're way, way, way past that. So well, I mean, it doesn't even make sense. <laughs> if they're manipulating the way their atoms move, then it would make sense that they'd be able to travel on on a light or you know some kind of sound frequency or something. Absolutely, and also they know. I mean, space is not linear. It's not like they're you know moving through space in one straight line. You know, like from here to the moon in one straight line. There are points within time space that are you have to think of space as like a hologram you know it's like there are points within this big hologram um that you can get from point a to point b instantaneously without going through uh cutting straight across if that makes sense it's a completely different technology and like you said if they can manipulate um the time space continuum then they can appear and disappear at, at any like at any point within that time space so yeah i mean people who uh are hearing this kind of stuff from the the typical the classic science point of view think it's completely like it doesn't make any sense but um but if you think of it from a completely different scientific perspective that it's not a linear classical science uh, point of view, it, it, it will make a lot of sense. But even like as a logical thing, you know, so there's like millions and billions of stars in the universe. So however that whole thing came about, whether it's a creator or a mind or whatever that is, uh, I mean, it would be kind of strange to think that, um, within this this huge <laughs> space and millions and the billions of stars that that would be there would be one intelligent life like just one you know it's like what <laughs> doesn't even doesn't even make sense you know well, like whoever invented it invented created humans and said that's it this species is so perfect i'm done here <laughs> you know? well you know it would be uh... I mean, who are we to, to say that, oh, we're so great, we're the only ones in this universe, you know? Yeah, exactly. It's not even logical. I mean, it's, it's so... <laughs> well, and I don't believe it's just a random thing that happens. I mean, there's got to be a plan behind it. I mean, that's just my opinion. I could be wrong. No, you're not wrong. Of course there's a plan. Because you can see some sort of uh, divine intelligence as you look at nature itself. There is a coherence in the design of the, you know, of the material world. Like even in plant life, even on a cellular, even your physical body has an intelligence and a geometry and a mechanism um that tells you there is an intelligent design behind it and you see that in plant life you see that in animal life and of course in the cosmos so whatever that divine intelligence is or however it works the fact that it is so organized on so many levels uh just the way your physical body operates uh to think that that intelligent design um uh, on a universal scale uh, could come up with only one species, you know, is is ridiculous. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, so uh, I definitely agree with you. There's a bigger picture and a bigger understanding. Well, I heard a theory and it was brought up by a few mediums and they had mentioned the fact that we are on a certain wavelength from, you know, day one and from this life to the next you are on a different frequency and in order to uh, I mean you, it's, how do I explain it the, the best way to, it's like a step it, once you get to what we consider to be heaven that you're 
you achieve to get to that next frequency to move up to move up to move up and then there's some that are just kind of destined to be at that that low level and I mean what do you what do you think about that yeah absolutely and and in fact like I said because of my work um, on myself the way I see you know how consciousness works and how it expands and also working like I said with so many people um, it's definitely a question of expanding consciousness to the next level to the next level to the next level and um, I don't know if some are destined to stay at a lower level I think I feel I think everybody has the potential to you know get to whatever highest level is possible and then continue to move forward because it's exponential I mean it's infinite um, but um, but Certainly, some people have chosen um, a harder way. <laughs> you know, it's like I mean, and they're they're making it so hard on themselves and everybody else around them that they seem to be stuck, and stuck in the sense um, that they don't even want to know about anything else, and that's the reason why they stay stuck at this lower level because they they don't want to hear about any other potential options mm -hmm. it's like this is it we come from bacteria and that's all there is to it and i'm just gonna you know take advantage of all of this and wither and die <laughs> you know it's like so so um, with us talking about the frequency of changing their their atoms and things like that to certain frequencies do you think that would give them uh, the ability to take the appearance of one of us yeah, uh, so the, you're talking about something different. Um, s s different things can happen when you have uh, an, an, an alien being, an extraterrestrial that is advanced enough. They can materialize uh, in different ways. So sometimes it's not so much that it's a cellular kind of, um, there's cellular energy that is, uh, breaking down or slowing down to appear as a form, but sometimes they can project uh, on your consciousness the image that you want to see. So you think you are seeing uh, an angel or whatever, or like uh, a hot woman. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, like they project into your consciousness the image that would be comfortable for you. Um, that you would open up and say, hey, yeah, like I'm very open and let's have a conversation or whatever. So that's that's a kind of a holographic image projection. It, it's one way. Another way, it's that they actually slow down their vibration and can in fact materialize or at least be half material so that you can perceive them you can see them um as a definitely as a shape as a form mm -hmm. and um but they're mostly light so, so it's like uh organized uh, form made of mostly light with some features so you kind of kind of make out what they are uh, what they look like the, in this case, they're usually their own, their true self, because um, they're not projecting on your brain an image that you want to see. It's more, this is who they really are. So there's two different ways of, um, you know, manipulating their, their energy to appear to you as a human. Well, you would assume that they're using a higher level of their brain than, than we do. I mean, what, we use 10% of our brain, and they're probably using a lot more than that? Yeah, it's not so much the brain. It's it's uh, Because some, some of them, it's not like they have a physical brain like we do. It's more their consciousness. So it's like their consciousness is the brain behind the entire body. And so, and so the consciousness would intend okay i want to become visible to kyle let's say you know of course from the other side and their consciousness as a whole knows how to manipulate their whole system and slow down their vibration and suddenly take on a form uh, so it's not like a linear kind of just one part of the brain that sets an intent and analyzes what that means and Da, da, da. It's just like a one whole. It's a completely different way of um, of existing and uh, and materializing. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, it's like a definitely a much much higher uh, technology and more advanced for sure. And if you're like me, I grew up you know watching Star Wars movies. I think I was seven when the first one came out, and uh, watched Star Trek on television. And we saw things on there like, man, that would be so cool to have. We never thought we would. I mean, like your the communicators and things like that. And now we're starting to see that technology. Do you think that is from them or it's just the human in, intuition to get out there and, and try well I, I definitely think that there is uh, interaction on uh, like in the ethers in other words on the other side of the veil let's call it that um, you know imagine that around the planet is a massive web okay you don't see it with the naked eye but it's like a matrix. It's like um, a, f- a unified field, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and everybody's inside that field, right? Because we're all on the earth. So all our thoughts, all our emotions, everything we do is kind of part of this matrix. It's it's this uh, this hub, if you will. That's the reason why, or some people call it the collective consciousness. So it's the consciousness of everybody at the same time. And so... That's the reason why sometimes you have a person who has an idea in India and another person who has the exact same idea in like the UK. And so how does that work? Because everybody is plugged into that same field, this unified field. And so we're all kind of receiving intuition, inspiration uh, from each other in a weird way because we're all collaborating to it. Every time you think you kind of put in your information in there and everybody else's information is there too you know Mm -hmm. and so so this unified field is uh because we're all plugged into it our brains basically our mind um so uh so advanced beings or aliens or you know extraterrestrial can come in and also participate like put in new thoughts new ideas new information into this collective consciousness so that if you are aspiring to receive information about you know like you know you want to have some cool technology of the future they can give you that information simply by uh, putting it in the collective consciousness and your mind is already tapped into it so you can you think you're getting an inspiration which you are Mm -hmm. but it's it's actually other people's thoughts that have collaborated if you will and that comes a lot like the more advanced and futuristic thing come from extraterrestrials just because they're more advanced does that make sense oh yes well that's kind of been my thought is that it all is part of a collective consciousness and and that's how we advance like say from this life to the to the next one um now you're you're familiar with the secret, right? The the book. Yeah, you know? yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. And I've been a true believer in that affirmations, um, you know, manifesting things that um, that you really want in this life. That's bound to be a part of it, correct? Yeah, exactly. So you know, I'm sure. I don't know. They only talk about the law of attraction. Like you think about. Um, something positive that you want to manifest and you attract its match. You know, that's pretty much what the secret is. But it's a little bit more than that, actually. It's it's a lot more than that. But but that's a good start. Um, there's something also called, you know, entanglement. I mean, this is scientifically proven phenomenon that uh, particles of, uh, uh, you know, can be... Um, very very far away from each other even two stars in the sky could be far away and yet exchange properties at a distance meaning the property of one physical object um, becomes part or transfers to the other physical object even though they're very far away uh, from each other physically they're separated physically so the idea is if um, actual physical matter can exchange property at a distance why is it so crazy to think that our thoughts can also be this means that what i want to say is that means that if they can be exchanged at a distance without any apparent reason 
it is probably because there's this unified field that holds it all together. You know what I mean? Like I was saying earlier, this matrix, you know, that connects everything together. So why is it so crazy to think that, you know, when we have thoughts, we're all connected through that same unified field and we're exchanging property, we're exchanging information, even though we're very far away. And in fact, this explains a lot. This explains telepathy. This, this explains intuition. Like, you know, like, let's say, I don't know if you have kids, but, you know, like if you, you know, so all of a sudden your wife or yourself, like you have this feeling that something happened to, mm -hmm. you know, your kid or your mom or your dad, you know what I mean? Even though they're not close to you. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. Or you think of someone and the phone rings and here they are. So, I mean, this is not like woo stuff, but you know, the, the fact that science doesn't know how to explain it doesn't mean it's woo, -woo. it just means that it doesn't know how to explain it yet, you know? And so, so I think that, you know, from, this, from the law of attraction to even uh, the concept of everything is part of the same field, unified field, larger, universal consciousness and everything is entangled um you know brings a lot of i mean it explains a lot of the phenomenon that we think are paranormal mm -hmm. you know and in fact uh, yeah go ahead i'm going on and on oh, no, 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 <laughs> no talk all you want to um one thing i was <laughs> going to mention because uh, i mean you're talking about that and you know i've, I've suffered from ptsd and anxiety mm -hmm. And mm. um, I've dealt with depression for a good part of my life. And my wife and I can be miles and miles apart. And if I'm having an episode, she picks up on it. And she will call mm. me and say, I mean, uh, mm. the first thing out of her mouth is, what's wrong? I'm like, how, mm. how the heck do you oh, know that? <laughs> yeah, I love that. Oh, my God. Well, I want to say two things. I'm so glad you shared this, Kyle. Well, first of all, this exactly is an example of what I just talked talked about. Um, it is because, well, first of all, also because you're married, you already are have a stronger energetic connection. But this communication, this feeling that something's going on is your thought is part of this unified field and she picks up on it because you guys are so connected even though she's far away this is because of the entanglement um phenomenon but i also want to mention something and in fact i'm going to be doing uh, a new uh podcast and i'm it's, this is one of the topics that i definitely want to talk about that people just don't realize ptsd but also just this well, kind of generalized weird anxiety you know how like all of a sudden everything seems to be fine and all of a sudden one day you wake up and you just have this weird um, anxiety going on and you can't shake it off most of the time it is the collective consciousness I usually have those um, very very weird feelings uh, before an earthquake happens or something that happens you know again on the other side of the planet it doesn't c concern me like uh you know in a physical sense because it's very far and yet i feel in fact yesterday th my whole body was shaking and i was like there's a huge earthquake there's a huge earthquake and it was cuba oh and sh yeah and so so all of these, um, especially depression and anxiety, have a lot to do with the collective consciousness. So of course, in your case, you talk about PTSD. You've been in um, um, you've been in a war somewhere, uh, or no? I had something else? I had something really tragic happen to me when I was a child. Yeah, exactly. So, so of course, in this case, it's a specific trauma, which, by the way, you can work on uh, and reverse and be free from it. I can talk to you about that um, at some point, if you like. Sure. Uh, but, but what I'm saying is, like, even without a trauma, you are still uh, tapped into this unified field and feeling stuff that is not even yours. So... Yeah, that happens to I, my wife all the time. She she'll be yeah. in the room and people will have certain emotions going on and she will feel it and she has to, to say, 
okay, this is not mine. I don't want it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So she sounds like she's very sensitive. But guess what? A lot of people are sensitive and they feel stuff and they have no idea what's going on. Because there's no reason, like, you know, things are fine and all of a sudden you, you just have this, this huge amount of sadness and depression. You can't shake it off. And so, you know, if people begin to realize and understand that this could be coming from the collective consciousness and learn to discern, okay, well, what is it like? For example, for me, I've been doing this for a very, very long time. So when something like this happens, I can feel, I can discern, okay, that's not me, but what is it? And who is it? And why? And things like that. So I can quickly eventually discern, okay, that's an earthquake and it's in this part of the planet. I don't expect everybody to be doing that, but at least if you are able to discern that that's not yours, just right there, you start to feel better because it's like, wait, there's nothing wrong with me. <laughs> oh. I'm just overly sensitive and I'm picking up on something else that's beyond me. Well, it... because, because when you feel this way, you think something's wrong with you. You know, you're like, why am I so depressed? Why am I so depressed? I, you know, so mental health. Now that there's this big thing with the mental health thing. Um, when in fact, to me, it's not a mental illness. It's just a state of mind and we don't know how to, manage it so we're calling you know this depression and anxiety and uh suicide and stuff and mental illness which is fine at least we're bringing attention to it but i'm just saying it's it's a lot of it has to do with this collective consciousness so with animals do you think they have that same ability as well oh my god 100 percent, 100 percent. i actually can hear my dog and I can hear her thoughts and sometimes like she's just so sad or weird or acting strange or what have you and sometimes um, I would look at her and I would see that is again she's she's feeling things that have to do with the earth or with, yeah or that is happening with the earth or humanity or you know nothing to do with like she doesn't like her food today you know <laughs> <laughs> Well, the, the reason why I say that, and I, I really believe in service animals because my wife and I had went to the pound. I would lost one of my cats that I'd had for over 10 years, and um, she's like, you, you need to, to you know, get that love back out there again. And so we went to the pound, and I was drawn to this one cat. And she, you know, they have a little room you can go in, and you get to kind of know them, and she automatically jumped in my lap and was rubbing all over me and every time that I'm feeling that depression or anxiety she comes running and jumps in my lap oh I don't you love that <laughs> <laughs> oh I do she, she, yeah, she's been yeah. a big help in me trying to deal with all this I mean you know yes I take medications and things but that seems to be the, the most smoothing thing when you just sit there and you've got an animal that's loving you right back and all they want is your love yeah i, I remember one time i was doing a, a small group it was like um an advanced healers uh group it's only like 20 people or something in, in the group and then so um when one person would be talking about something that they were struggling with my dog would go and sit on their feet oh wow it was yeah, it was so interesting. Like she would put her belly, you know, right on on their feet, and the person would just kind of like all of a sudden like just dissolve, like they would cry, <laughs> release something. It was so cool. And then another person would talk, and my dog would just go and sit on. It was so incredible. So. Yeah, I mean, there's this incredible connection with with animals. I'm so glad you found yours. <laughs> oh yeah. But um, uh, you know, I'd be happy to to talk to you about um your experience maybe some other time. But the problem, you know, I hope I don't know what kind of medication you take, but that's the reason why I'm sharing all this information and um, you know, trying to help as many people as possible because. You know, once you start with medication, sometimes you're you're also training the brain to, you know, get used to the medication to make you feel better. So 
so you also, you know, I mean, you don't want that eventually. So, um, so I'm hoping that by you doing all this work and, uh, exploring more option and understanding, you know, you can, um, also eventually kind of, uh, do something that will free you completely from your experience and your trauma. Well, you know, I've always kind of strived for enlightenment and, along that line I eventually want to get off these medications because I think it's it has hindered certain abilities that I feel like I have um, it it does screw up the uh, chemical you know that balance that you have in your brain and it, it just God, it's it's it, it, as I get so used to the medications that uh, okay let's say for instance I mean I've, I've lived with insomnia for the last what 13 14 years or so and I started out they gave me Ambien well I had no idea what Ambien was I just took it and then pff, all of a sudden I feel like I'm having an acid trip or something mm, but, wow but then I got used to it so they switched me to something else and then they switched me to something else now I'm on the most um, powerful drug that you can take to help you sleep and even that doesn't work sometimes so yeah i want to get back mm -hmm. to that natural state i don't know how long that will take but i would love to get back there oh yeah exactly i'm so glad you're sharing this because and this is a perfect example that uh is telling you that this is not a chemical problem you know you cure chemistry with chemistry so you know the drug is chemical so you're changing the chemistry of your brain with another chemical. What is really happening is energetic or, you know, there's of course psychological. And so it's mental and energetic. So if you don't address that, the problem is going to remain. You know what I mean? You can change all the different brands, you know, all the different, you know, it's not going to work because you're only addressing the chemistry. You're not addressing the, the root cause. And so that's the reason why this is where you have to do um, an energetic session, a regression session. I'm happy, happy to help you with that, oh, yes. um, you know, and just to when you go back to the root cause, uh, when you um, you started to have those experiences and change what triggered that the first time changes like you reprogram the pattern that started you change uh, that whole pattern then the pattern disappears and without any drugs because it's not a chemical problem now some people have a chemical problem that's a different story but that's not your case and the fact that you have been, um, you know, changing drugs one after the other and it's not working tells you that it's not a chemical problem. You know, does that make sense? Oh, yeah. Definitely. And so, yeah, so that's the reason why uh, I think it would really be helpful if you um, did a session where, like I said, try to identify the root cause. Um, I mean, I'm seeing stuff when you were younger, I want to say seven years old. Um, and also, I don't know, like some of this stuff is unconscious. Like there's a lot of people who had an experience and they don't know exactly what happened. They just know that something happened. And sometimes when we do the regression, like they start to remember. So, but I think you had an uh, out of body experience. Like a, it's almost like you died and came back. I actually did. <laughs> Yeah. So, and that's the reason. So you are conscious. That's good. And so, and I feel like when you died, um, like you didn't want to come back. And so, um, and so there's like this whole dynamic that um, happened there that needs, because when you were out of body, you could see very clearly like all the problems with the earth and things like that and so it's almost like you almost uh chose not to come back and so um so that is to me that is the biggest uh gap in your consciousness which would be a trauma from my perspective that needs to be healed uh, because you kind of said i'm not doing this um, this is not the life that I want or whatever. 
And that created a bunch of patterns and this resistance to be in this physical body um, at this time. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, well, the way I looked at it was I, I felt that it was a, a form of astral projection. And I actually saw myself leaving my body, um, going over the roof of my house, the trees up in the sky, found myself actually in space itself. And it was almost like there was a tether attached to my foot. And the, when I got to that point where I felt like, uh oh, I'm not coming back, it's like it yanked on me and boom, here I am. I come in and it, everything is going in reverse, but a lot faster. And then I felt like I, I actually hit the bed and then I woke up and I mean, my heart's going 90 to nothing. And yeah, you know, I was like, I've kind of longed to have that experience again. Uh, mm. I had something similar to that where I ended up leaving my home and I went into somebody else's home. I walked around. I got to see them sitting there watching television and I got to know the whole house. And I just, you know, I took that at the time as, oh, it's just a real vivid dream. But the funny thing is, is I, I used to be an exterminator and I went to these people's house to exterminate and it was the house that I actually visited and I'd never been there mm -hmm. before yeah exactly pretty yeah blows your mind <laughs> yeah exactly well that's pretty much what I said you're out of body you know and you saw everything and so and coming back to me is the trauma because usually people you know obviously as you know you're born you know and then you just have this life and you don't kind of escape the body and come back you know i mean of course there's near death experiences there's out of body experiences astral projections whatever you want to call it but the average person doesn't do that you know you're like you're just here and that's that you know and so when you do have these experiences they're life-changing they're they are traumatic because it's almost like you see like night and day, you know, what it's like to be on the other side and what it's like to be in the body. And it's such a huge contrast, such a huge contrast that your life changes completely when you do it this way. That's why most people aren't conscious or they block it off because they can't deal with it. But you are very, very sensitive. And so... Um, I feel like this this experience should um, be beneficial to you, but right now it's still kind of like in this. Uh, you're like in between two worlds. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> do I want to be here? Do I want to be there? I don't know what's going on. How do the two work? You know, together. So I think that's the the trauma that needs to change. The dynamic that needs to change. Well, I, yeah. I have been told that I'm not of this world. <laughs> uh, absolutely. I mean, who is in a way? But yeah, you're... Um, so that's that's what I was saying earlier. I think you had this experience for you to learn and understand what really happened, how it happened, and what you're supposed to do with it. So I feel like the, the fact that we're coming together doing this radio show is more about more about you know, what's next on your journey, then, you know, <laughs> you know, so. Well, I don't feel like uh, anything is a coincidence. Everything's supposed to happen for, for a reason. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So that's the reason why um, I think uh, once you go deeper into this, you'll know how you're going to be able to help other people exactly with that. Now I'm kind of fast forwarding on your <laughs> trajectory. I feel like I feel like you're going to, are you, I mean, I don't know, have you explored doing any sort of energy healing or anything like that? Actually, yes. Um, we uh, we use crystals and, and uh, aromatherapy, um, even meditation. So, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I'm, I'm all for it. Yeah, I think you're going to be able to facilitate experiences for other people and help them a lot. But first you have to understand more about what happened to you and resolve your um, issue does that make sense so that you so that you know how it would work for other people and so 
I've I can always, recommend some things. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, I've always kind of had that desire to help other people. I'm more apt to help others than I am myself. And is your wife also doing that? Because I see you both. Like, I see both of you doing that. Well, she's she's an empath. And she, oh, yeah. she is working on uh, her mediumship right now. She's kind of yeah. always had that ability, but she's trying to hone more in on it now. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm happy to send you some suggestions and some things. And uh, if you want, we could do a, a deeper session at one point. Oh, that'd be nice. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I feel like that's what um, that's what you know is really your calling. I mean, down the road. So I'm not saying you should stop doing podcasts, <laughs> <laughs> but you know. But I, but it's more like you know, your healing people is really awesome. You're very good at it. Oh, um, thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we can talk more about that. I'll send you some links as well. Um, yeah, that's awesome. So whereabouts are you? Are you guys in Texas or? Yes, we are just north of Austin. Oh, okay. I went to school there. Did you? Where'd you yeah. go? Yeah. UT. You went to UT? <laughs> Longhorns, yeah. baby. Longhorns. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway. So. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I'll send you some links just for you to... Um, see what you'd like to explore to expand your ability as a healer and then to uh, reverse that trauma I think we need a, like a real session oh well thank you so, I appreciate that yeah <laughs> so, let's step back a little bit and uh, yeah. you know, I was talking about the technology and, and things we saw in Star Trek and Star Wars and I, I know if you watch Star Trek they have those hologram decks you think that's mm. going to be something that we see in our near future? What do you mean? Um, like, see, like where? Like a spaceship? What, what do you mean? Or, you know, whenever they uh, want to do a program where they go back to, you know, the 1930s or whatever, and they go on the holodeck and they're wearing the, the yeah. gear of the day and they're experiencing those kind of things from that day. Are we, are we going to have that kind yeah. of technology? I think so, but I think, you know, the earth has to go through a lot of things before those types of things start to happen, mm -hmm. because as you see already, there's some very interesting technology, but it's being used um, for the wrong thing. And so, um, so I think a lot of the, the technology is coming, but the earth itself, you, we need, it's almost like, at this point, we have to get rid of the bad weeds. It's like there's no way around it. Like the earth has to heal um, uh, in such a profound way to before uh, those types of technologies start to be accessible. Because there's still, you know, the, the conscious, the level of consciousness of humanity is still very low. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if you introduce certain things. At the wrong time, they can still be used for the wrong purpose. Well, so that's my take. <laughs> well, when you talk about the right time, um, this brings up another question. Um, do you think that you know, like shows like Ancient Aliens and you know Project Blue Book and The Unexplained, all these things, are they in a way preparing us for? the uh, the coming of aliens and, and actually being able to accept it unlike what it was back in the Orson Welles days yeah for sure at least they're introducing the all these concepts and ideas in a very kind of user friendly if you will like um, you know acceptable way because it's still supposed to be entertainment or television or whatever or sci-fi but I wanted to I didn't have a chance to talk about it but my film the last the the recent one that i just finished that's about to be released actually next month uh, superhuman it's called superhuman the invisible made visible uh basically it's it's uh focused on um the uh, ability of the mind to control matter and i'm not talking about like <laughs> you know just like making things levitate just because you know i'm talking about 
um, increasing the potential of your mind uh, to the point of, you know, just focusing on body and just healing yourself just like that. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, training your mind to change the chemistry of your body and things like that. And so, so what I've done in the film is I, I, we use a lot of um, scientific experiments and scientific demonstrations how consciousness is boundless and it control it can control matter so there's all these scientific um, uh, ec- um, experiments that are in the film but the reason why I'm talking about this is because we're also teaching all of these techniques now um, you know at the workshops and online things um, um, it's called superhuman workshops uh, for people to begin to train to really 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 train the mind to do all of these things you know bilocate and remote viewing and precognition and uh, telekinesis and uh, seeing with the blindfolds on you know so your consciousness is goes beyond your body so so I feel like this is what's relevant today is is not just like hey, other worlds exist and aliens exist. Um, at this point, we need to start training ourselves and just accepting the fact that our mind can control matter. And these are all the tools, you know, to begin doing it. So um, that's kind of what I feel I'm trying to contribute <laughs> at this point. Well, I'm looking forward to that. I, actually, uh, your assistant messaged me about you having that uh, movie coming out soon, and um, I would love to have you back on to talk more about it at another date, if if that would be possible. Yeah, absolutely. And the people can, uh, you know, you can go to the website and read a lot of uh, what's going on and what we're doing and the workshops, but also the film itself and see see at least the trailer and the, some clips, um, you know, superhumanfilm.com. Um, there's uh, all that stuff on there. And so, yeah, we can keep chatting, Kyle. No worries. That would, that would be great. Um, do you think that we're at a point where we'd be more accepting that aliens are here? Yeah, it's, that's what I mean. Like, I feel like at this point we we should stop saying, are they here? You know, I think I saw something in the sky. Uh, that's what I'm saying. I think we need to change our vocabulary and just, say you know i saw this i know this is real and not so much worry about i mean look at the world around us i mean it's such a chaos like nobody knows anything everybody's feeding you all kinds of it's like come on it's like you know Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know and then there's like fake news here and fake news there you know like nobody knows what the real truth is so we need to begin to say that I know for a fact that aliens are here. I know for a fact that my experience was real. I know for a fact, I just need to kind of pretend or not worry about anybody else and just go for it. You know, that's what I'm saying. That's the turn that we need to be making at this point. Instead of questioning, just say, this is the way it is. This is my truth. This is many people's truth. Let's move on. You know, and that was another question: was you know, are they here, and are they actually working with our government? Yeah, you know, many people ask me that question. So, of course, some of them are here working with the government and have a weird agenda, you know, which is to continue the control and the, you know, the confusion and things like that. But then there's also many others who are also here, like I said, either helping. working from the other side of the veil like implanting stuff in the collective consciousness and in you know different people's uh, field um, and they're here to help so you know they're both agendas at least two agendas if not more but just like look around I mean there's humans doing weird stuff and there's humans doing great stuff and there's people you know like so it's the same thing with aliens like we can't think that they're all trying to get rid of us and take over the earth. If that's what they want, that's what I've, that 
that should have happened a long time ago, <laughs> you know, because right. we have the technologies, like they're not asking our permission, you know, <laughs> it's like, if they want to bomb the whole planet, it would have been done, would be done by now. So the reason why that's not happening is because there's another side. There are other beings who don't want that to happen. You see? Right. Well, you think of how far we've come technology-wise in the last, what, 70, 80 years. You go from the, the 40s, and all of a sudden everything's just moving so fast. In 69, we were on the moon, you know? And, yeah. you know, we wake up one day and mom's down at the store buying a new microwave. And, you know, we've got <laughs> we've got uh, actual communication devices in our hands and we have a computer in our hand. I would have never fathomed that as a child. And here it is. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and all of this advancement also has to do with, the you know, this kind of infiltration of higher consciousness or advanced technology through the collective consciousness you know they don't have to like show up in a in a human body and go to work to like ge or whatever or uh, you know and like start doing things in a physical sense they can just pour that idea into your brain all of a sudden oh this scientist came up with this or this guy came up with that but you know, where did he get that idea from? <laughs> they're, they're working at the uh, post office in the DMV now. Yeah, right, exactly, <laughs> right? <laughs> anyway, yeah. <laughs> Man, this, this hour has flown by. Um, how does everybody <laughs> find you on uh, social media, and can you give us that uh, website for your, your film? Yeah, so the film is superhumanfilm.com. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the work that has to do, and of course all the social media is like on that page that has to do with the film and the workshops and things like that. And the people who are interested in healing and consciousness, uh, they can go to my uh, other website, which is carolinecorey.com. Mm -hmm. And um, all the social media pages are on there as well. There's also, I also have a lot of free stuff on that website, so if people want to explore. Oh, I love free stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and are you going to be on the uh, this season quite a bit on uh, Ancient Aliens? Yeah. yeah, I still have quite a few episodes that we shot that are, haven't aired yet. So, um, But sometimes they change the date. That's why I usually don't announce, men, I, I don't announce them on my Facebook page. Um, you know, I kind of see them after the fact. <laughs> and so, yeah, I'm going to be in quite a few episodes this year, for sure. And have you actually met George Sukalos in person? Yeah, of course. Many times, because we're, um, we, you know, we also do uh, Alien Con, which is the conference. Right. And so we're all there together, yeah. Um, yeah, because yeah. <laughs> My wife says that I look like him when I wake up first thing in the morning. Cause the oh. <laughs> we've got the hair thing going, yeah. <laughs> well, you should come out. Well, I mean, I don't know when the next one is going to be, but um, they've maybe, I don't know what they're doing right now, but we did quite a few alien con conferences, and they were very, very successful, and we were all there. I thought that's where I met you. When the last one was in Dallas, but I guess not. No, I didn't get to make. I wanted to go really bad, and I didn't. I didn't yeah. get to go. Um, I I did speak to a gentleman last week that uh, knows Linda Howell. Hmm. And uh, yeah, I'd love to get her on the show sometime. She's a very interesting person. Yeah, absolutely. So you know, if she, he can introduce you or whatever, I'm happy to connect you. You know, yeah, I know Linda's adorable too. We all we all connect during these events, especially. Sometimes we cross paths, like it depends what we're filming or something. So. <laughs> well, to to wind the show down, uh, once again, I'd like to mention about the uh, the Bully Busters. And you can go to their website at stompoutbullying.org or call their number at 877-NO-BULLY. That's 877-662-8559. And go buy their merchandise because the proceeds go to expanding the reach of their resources and also allows them to run their 24-hour helpline. Oh, boy.